Um, hey guys, welcome to Data Trek, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. Today I have Ravi Teja Shetty with me about Ravi. He has done his bachelor's from NIT Warangal. Then he did his master's from IIIT Bangalore. He has worked for prestigious organizations like TCS Research, Glance, and currently he is working as developer advocate engineer at Lama Index. So welcome, rel welcome Ravi to the channel. Uh, hi, Abhishek. Thanks for having me. Really excited about uh, today's uh, uh, interaction. Thank yes. you for the uh, invitation. Sure. Same here, Ravi. So, so Ravi, let's start with, tell us about Lama Index and uh, what are your key responsibilities as developer advocate engineer at Lama Index? Yeah, Lama Index is an uh, open source framework, uh, which is uh, useful for building uh, LLM applications, uh, which will uh, use your process of building RAG applications or agentic applications, and uh, which involves even LLMs as well as multimodal LLMs as well. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, high-level overview of uh, uh, what Lama Index is. And as a uh, 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 the key responsibilities of uh, uh, developer advocate engineer is like you do experiments on uh, uh, different uh, uh, whatever components or on RAG applications or multimodal RAG or any other things. Uh, that can help uh, you know, people build better RAG applications and write blog posts and uh, educate people. Uh, that is one area. And the second area is uh, you uh, actually talk to customers, uh, um, see what are their obstacles and help them uh, uh, move away from that obstacles. If there is there are some changes needed uh, to the framework to move away that obstacles, uh, add, add to it and then help uh, people in the community who are using Lama Index uh, uh, in general. It's like uh, solving bug issues in your organization. And then the third one is, uh, fourth one, I guess, like uh, you can actually uh, onboard new customers, talk to new customers, what are their pain points uh, in general, like a, uh, how uh, a product evolves. You do uh, customer uh, calls, right? So you do customer uh, calls and then see uh, what what are some things needed for them in the open source framework and how uh, different use cases running uh, in the community and then see how you can evolve the framework as well. And the fifth one is uh, if you have ideas, if I have some ideas uh, on engineering side, uh, yeah, contribute and make the framework much better. Yeah, overall, these are my responsibilities as a developer advocate engineer. Awesome, awesome. And I have personally learned a lot about Llama Index and Reg. Uh, reading your blog post over LinkedIn. So Ravi is yeah. quite uh, regular in his post in LinkedIn where he posts about these things and you can definitely follow him. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So Ravi, thank, you, thank you for showing up. <laughs> definitely. And Ravi, tell us how did you ended up in Lama Index? How did your journey with Lama Index begin? Oh, that, uh, that's really an interesting journey. So one of my, uh, I was uh, uh, talking to one of my friend uh, who is in US. Uh, he's currently in uh, India um a name funny srikant so he was uh, we were discussing about uh, llms were good how can we attach uh, external data uh, i have my own resumes or pdfs how can i attach it to gpt3 at, at that time the gpt3.5 was not even released i guess yeah gpt3 was there i guess so how can i uh, attach them <clears throat> and then we were uh, we were doing a research and then uh, we came uh, to retro paper and then we were exploring and uh, and later later it was fun that like he went on a christmas vacation and i was uh, going to uh, exploring uh, gpt index library and it was very uh, naive stages even the library or the documentation is not so good uh, but then i started building some demos and uh, exploring some use cases and then something was not working as expected and jerry was so is a co-founder and ceo of llama index uh, he was on uh, posting updates uh, daily on uh, twitter and then um, on one of the update i commented that this is not something working as expected and then he reached out to me uh, for him i am a customer at that point of time so he reached out to me so why is not working what your use case and all and yeah some uh, we solved it and later on i built a demo on top of that and uh, and then uh, I, I was building a couple of demos and every demo became a contribution at that point of time and seeing my demos some of the people who are building rag applications like uh, albus 
uh, his, which is part of Springworks, uh, uh, reached out to me and uh, I was helping them how to uh, uh, use Llama Index or any other vector DBs in building RAG applications. And I w- and then slowly I was uh, giving talks as well. And eventually, yeah, I was contributing and even helping people in the community. Whatever I'm doing right now on job, I was actually doing that uh, before uh, uh, starting as full-time at Llama Index. And then eventually, yeah, since I'm uh, invest doing those things as a uh, contributor, yeah, I shifted to being a full-time. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was uh, my journey. Yeah. Got it, Ravi. And one follow-up question. How is it like uh, working closely with Jerry? Oh, it's uh, it's very awesome. Like, uh, I can't say, I mean, I'm very fortunate to <laughs> land up there and work with the team. And not only Jerry, Jerry Logan, Simon, who is co-founder, Logan is a front uh, um, uh, engineer, and I mean, full stack engineer, and uh, who is founding engineer, I mean. And then uh, E, who is head of partnerships, and then... Um, uh yeah lori he's head of relations yeah i work with all of them and a pretty solid team yeah i can say great i mean the speed at which uh the speed at which they uh uh they operate uh sometimes amazes me and uh, motivates me to work in the same manner if you have seen recently one of the integrations i made uh, is uh, mistral so i think mistral came and within uh four hours the integration is landed in uh, llama index I have not done earlier uh, uh, with such a short span of time, such a uh, integration. I think uh, the motivation comes from Jerry and others in the team. How fast they op- operate and in a similar fashion, I got to go in the same same way. It made me improve uh, a lot on um, how fast you need to deliver things. And um, even uh, doing a customer uh, calls, how can, um, what are some things you need to ask and pinpoint. So these are some things, yeah, uh, technically and other ways also. Yeah, very enhancing experience, I would say. Glad to hear. And definitely we grow when we work in such fast pace and motivated. And yeah, yeah. And then yes, yes, for yeah. the audience, do you want to quickly give a brief about what Mistral is? Oh, uh, Mistral is uh, a language uh, LLM. I mean, not la- large language model, I would say. Uh, so LLM, like... Uh, chat GPT, GPT 3.5 or uh, uh, GPT 4 or maybe like Gemini. Um, yeah, I mean, you can, whatever you can do with uh, any other uh, uh, LLM, you can do with, that with Mistral as well. And then uh, uh, they have open sourced a uh, uh, mixture of experts model uh, Yeah, recently, uh, it, which is a very uh, great move uh, from uh, any big company. Yes. Got it. And Ravi, like there is another popular framework as well, which is there uh, out there, Langchain. So how is the two frameworks, Llama Index and Langchain, different from each other? I was expecting this would be the first question rather than any other questions. (laughs) So this is one of the questions, like whenever I uh, conduct workshops or uh, uh, anywhere I go, I start within first five minutes, I get this question. What is the difference between Langchain and Llama Index? Uh, before even starting the session, yeah, they just want to know what is the difference. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, so, I mean, there are a couple of interesting features, like uh, uh, if you want to do a comparison between documents of question query engine, which is in Llama Index, uh, pretty much useful and uh, uh, standard use case and also multi-document agents when uh, you want to, uh, build rag system or a uh, large number of documents multi-document agents is something and recently on agent side as well we have added something in, uh, interesting wherein you can actually uh, um, agents are something at each step uh, you execute some something right so uh, after each step if you want to use some extra input or some other input you can do that as well so uh, yeah these are some interesting features that you can explore uh, in llama index apart from uh, langchain uh, but uh, with Llama Index, it, we are very much focused on the RAG at the moment. Got it, got it. So Ravi, what we will do next is we will take a slight detour from Llama Index and ask some uh, personal questions and then we'll circle back and revisit Llama Index. Uh, the sure. first question being, uh, you have contributed a lot in open source, right? So how did you got started in open source and what are some of your uh, contributions that you are proud of? 
Oh, okay. Uh, I think there are two uh, two things. How did I start and what are the contributions which I'm very proud of, right? So uh, the first one is, uh, I think I started um, my, at least I start to do in the first contribution in Hugging Face in 2021. Uh, it feels so, I mean, uh, stupid or lawful. Like I used to ping their CEO or CTO and ask them how to do this particular PR. He was, uh, uh, he was asked, I, uh, there was one model on uh, uh, multiple Indian languages that uh, Google has released at that point of time. And uh, and at that point of time, and I was trying to oh, add that model to Hugging Face. Uh, and it was it was very stupid of me to uh, on how I ended up. And I uh, it uh, that ended up like uh, the author from Google itself added it. So <laughs> so it was very bad uh, of how I, uh, the how my contribution was the first uh, with the with that model and later on i uh, i i want to uh, i want to contribute to i mean to hone my i mean improve my skills in general but uh, the connection was basically missing like i explored lightning ai i, I was doing uh, thinking of contributing to spacey library as well and uh, i think yeah some other uh, one more library, which I don't remember exactly, but but I think uh, with Llama Index, as I said, uh, it all started with uh, I was building some demos and use cases, and then I was able to contribute there. So that connection with uh, what is a use case and uh, uh, made me uh, connected to Llama Index framework. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of people actually ask like what, where should I start and all. So uh, personally, I feel there should be some some connection for you with any library to continue. Otherwise, it would be very hard, uh, right? So that is one thing. And what is uh, some contribution where I am very much proud is like uh, the on the evaluations part in the Llama Index, uh, where uh, we started um, the how to evaluate your rack systems. That's something, yeah. Even Albus was using at that point of time. Even now as well. So evaluation is something uh, which I'm very proud and then. Uh, people were uh, start using it like whatever you are open sourcing uh, many people were uh, start using it that makes me uh, that made me really happy at that point of time got it so two things you talked about one is that you should be connected with the library what it does and secondly you should like the uh, the good feel you get when many people start using it motivates you more but from tools wise if someone wants to start with open source contribution what tools would you suggest uh, they should know at least the basic about so that they can get started with their own open source contributions? I think uh, if I mean on the ML space, people generally use Python, right? I think Python should be if you are if you are, you know Python and you know basics of ML. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of library, right? even Hugging Face or uh, Llama Index or uh, Lightning AI and Keras, PyTorch, there are a lot of other libraries as well, right? And then uh, you want to do some, if you want to start something, there will be good first issues, right? Even for Llama Index, there is a project board uh, where uh, there are uh, different uh, good first issues, medium uh, range and very hard range uh, issues where you can start with and contribute. So you'll have, uh, go to any library, like I think most of the um, uh, people in ML space were using Hugging Face. Probably if they're interested, they can go to Hugging Face and then see uh, what are the good first issues and uh, start contributing there. Or else you can check out Llama Index and uh, check out uh, Project Board and see what are the issues present if you are uh, interested, uh, contribute there. Yeah. yeah. And even, I mean, uh, you can uh, uh, join the Discord and ask people like a way if you are stuck somewhere and yeah, that also can be done. Got I think uh, with the open source, like people are uh, much more yeah, helpful in uh, like if, even if you're stuck, there are people uh, who can help you. Got it. And then maybe some basic knowledge of Git will also help. Yes, yes, sure. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah and... I think uh, uh, the raising a PR and uh, those are like basic stuff which are expected. So I did not mention. Got it. And uh, Ravi, like how do you keep yourself updated with the uh, latest happenings around LLMs because when a new model comes, it's not just about integrating it with Llama index, but also know, knowing that what new trick they have used, right? So how do you keep yourself updated with the recent 
uh, algorithm changes and so on oh uh, yeah uh, so i think um, everyone uh, faces difficulty in getting uh, keeping updated right like the pace at which at least in 2023 it happened uh, you can't sleep <laughs> and you can't even go for vacation <laughs> that was the scenario uh, at certain point of time but personally for me uh, it was all twitter uh, where uh, i uh, i was very active and uh, keep uh, following people and getting uh, updates from uh, people and what what are good things what changed right so and then uh, youtube videos as well and then uh, people write a lot of uh, interesting stuff on linkedin as well right um yeah and also the other way is uh, if you um, do some integration you'll know uh, you'll know the internal data is like uh, mr l many people were actually talking about uh, mr of experts but uh, there is a random seed feature as well uh, and then even um, a safeguard like safe uh, mode on as well so so these are some two interesting features that i found in mistral which many people are not even talking about so when you start playing little like allocate even half an hour you'll uh, actually understand uh, what's happening in say yeah yeah mm-hmm. mostly if you ask me like uh, i mean uh, our twitter and the other sources uh, part of a uh, good friend circle Mm. and whom you follow yes yeah i completely agree i do the same like when exam uh, for example when gemini was released i didn't watch the whole episode but i just went through the some of the linkedin posts where people would have summarized what are the main, main key items of the release so if you just yeah. uh, write people in linkedin then you get to know or, or 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 in twitter you get to know what are the main key happenings around yes yes yeah and even gemini has uh, embeddings as well Mm-hmm. and many people are not talking about that and then i think even they have a safe mode like mistral and the open uh, yeah yeah mm-hmm. so that is also an interesting thing to experiment yeah exactly and uh, so ravi on the thing that you told how fast the this field is growing i just want to share one story uh, so i was watching one of this podcast of joe rogan and naval ravikant which was of 2019 around 4 years back i even posted about it in linkedin that 4 years back naval ravi khan said that uh, machine learning is more about pattern recognition and we are nowhere close to creative thinking but uh, now fast forward to 2022 november when uh, chat gpt was released and uh, this all these models have come even in that podcast naval ravi khan said that in maybe in this lifetime we may never see agi but the way things have uh, grown and the where we are currently now so it's been like making the impossible possible because the way these models are working it's like close to agi and sometimes people say that we still we haven't uh, reached that agi there i usually say or ask them is then define agi if this is not agi then what is agi oh i mean uh, oh what is agi so uh, that's an interesting conversation like if you have went uh, i don't remember the exact uh, paper or uh, the blue uh, i think someone from open ai or uh, some other organization has released uh, uh, the different uh, levels at which what you call agi like uh, i don't remember exactly uh, it watched what level we have reached now but they have different uh, defined exactly okay if we reach these uh, steps uh, i mean the levels uh, uh, it is named as uh, we, we have reached aj but but yeah according to that definitions we haven't reached aj <laughs> got it and for the <laughs> yeah, yeah. agi is stands for artificial general intelligence yes yes yeah and uh, ravi like uh, as you talked about lot of models which been released like chat gpt gemini uh and mistral but still what are the some limitations that you can think of uh with these llms that can be improved upon um i think um probably from up, uh, uh from the application point of view especially speaking for the rag side um uh it this cannot be a uh, limitation exactly for the uh, llms but something uh, recently uh, i experimented with the evaluation part so in general uh, while evaluating any rag application people use tend to use gpt4 right and then so even the evaluations like people them to use like whether it is correct or not 
you have a question you have a references and you have a generated answer ask gpt4 to evaluate it but then uh, after looking uh, closely that the evaluations are true but again if you want to keep some threshold uh, it's not always correct like uh, it tend to give lesser penalty for uh, for the wrong answers so keeping a threshold becomes very difficult uh, in those cases and as well as uh, even i think hallucinations is something which is people call it as a feature not bug but uh, that is also something uh, uh, even if you fine tune an llm uh, like how uh, i know you made a lot of videos on that end and uh, and then uh, fine tune on a document how far uh, the hallucinations reduces yeah uh, those are some interesting things that people might uh, i'm i'm interested to explore yeah got it yeah and there was a paper in this time near near ips where the paper was decoding uh, i think it was uh, decoding trust and they have like tried to evaluate uh, these gpt models answers on different type of uh, evaluation metrics uh, and uh, seen that in which scenarios it jailbreaks and so on so yeah a lot of evaluation are happening around this and uh, every new version will definitely improve upon the previous one like gpt4 is gpt4 is much more robust than gpt3.5 in this kind of mm-hmm. x so yeah 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 and also i think uh, the other one is uh, probably prompting i mean uh, i think there was a uh, i think recently there was a day where uh, uh, with chat gpt uh, we are facing outage and the same prompts might not uh, work in the same fashion uh, with other llms as well exactly so you have yeah, to do a lot of fine tuning you have to do a lot of fine tuning to make it work like the right prompt, yeah. that prompt correct is very tough <laughs> <laughs> yes yes exactly exactly even in my personal experience like um, uh, working at glance like i was uh, we were developing an application mm-hmm. and we uh, were uh, we did a lot of prompt engineering to make it work with uh, gpt3 for one of the use case mm-hmm. and then next week gpt3.5 has come what our prompt we have written uh, we don't need so much of prompting with gpt3.5 oh. and uh, <laughs> yeah so uh, it got away with like uh, with very few uh, i mean lines of prompt and and we don't know uh, with other llm like with recent uh, kind of um, i mean outage happened uh, same prompts might work with other llms or not what kind some even give with um, i mean the output should be in json structure right so some people experiment in their products have that such kind of prompts as well right so they might face issues yeah that is some limitation or uh, uh, area where uh, people might be interested in. got it got it and uh, ravi like now coming back to llama index uh, how does llama index handle different type of data like pdf spreadsheets and also multi modality images speech text how does it handle uh, multi model data in rag and other uh, use cases oh okay got it so i think uh, i can speak about uh, two uh, two things here one thing is how how does it handle uh, different modality or different data sources the second one is how how does it handle multi model in rag nature right so uh, to answer the first question like uh, so we have 100 plus uh, data loaders in llama hub llama hub is a repository for data loaders uh, uh, agent tools llama packs and uh, llama data sets as well so people uh, uh, you can use all these 100 plus data loaders uh, to have uh, i mean if you have data in any format you can use any of these data loaders and and then you can build a uh, rag application on top of that once you have load the data and the second one yeah using for uh, images multi model embeddings right so now we have a multi model uh, vector store index abstraction to handle both images and text so basically Uh, in a simpler sense like you index all the images in using clip embeddings or any other uh, multi model i mean image embeddings and then in uh, you can retrieve them uh, when you ask some question those uh, images either with an image or with a text you retrieve some of these images and send it to uh, either chat gpt vision uh, api or else maybe gemini vision api that uh, was re- re- released recently 
and then i can answer some questions according to you yeah got it got it so that's how that's how the multimodal uh, nature works in yeah got it got it and uh, ravi like uh, since you are now working as developer advocate engineer and before that also you were helping companies uh, implement their use cases of rag and similar things with uh, llms what are some of the most interesting use cases you have come across maybe sales marketing recruitment or whatever like comes to your mind some of the top interesting use okay. you don't have to pinpoint the company yeah. name, but just the use case <laughs> Uh, okay uh, i think uh, before even i mean uh, after uh, starting the con- contributing to lama index uh, uh, in between i was helping one of my friend to build one of the use case so uh, he is actually sales representative so as a sales representative he uh, i think he takes 6 to 7 calls a day uh, and each call goes more than half and half an hour and uh, and then he spends almost uh, i don't remember the exact time 15 minutes to thir- 25 minutes probably uh, to write down what actually happened in the call like how did the customer react what uh, what is when is the next meeting scheduled what are the action items and uh, usual mom kind of thing but in detail and share that to the manager or uh, uh, fellow colleagues and they'll also look into it so uh, we built a bot uh, wherein like usual rag application you combine uh, you get it call transcript and then you extract uh, these uh, they have a different format of uh, what are the action items and what are uh, what is the next meeting schedule when is the next meeting schedule and a few other specific things that are specifically related to sales person because uh, uh, to extract some insights so uh, so whenever a user someone asks a question like the sales representative asks a question what did the customer say about the specific fact in a call like uh, you can remember the call today but 10 days down the line if he wants to recap either he has to go to the notes again or else uh, you can directly ask that question uh, to that specific call and then he can get and then he can just remind that and then go ahead with the call right so we were uh, developing such kind of application it was very pretty interesting use case uh, i think uh, even fireflies was uh, implementing some something similar lines or many other uh, now 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 many companies have come in the similar lines and so that is one uh, application and the second I, you were even mentioning about recruiting as well right so even in recruiting like uh, this is one of the demo where uh, a second demo i was which uh, i was doing with lama and said at that point of time and you have lot of resumes and uh, each person has different skills and projects and i think when i showed the demo to one of my uh, manager uh, at lands uh, he said he has 800 applications now can you use this tool to <laughs> filter out some of these applications where i want <laughs> and so in recruitment like if you want to filter out uh, the candidates uh, you can actually use build an application uh, using uh, rag and and see how it goes yeah that is other important application which i like got it so so one follow up question to that like suppose i am using a particular data loader from lama index or i have implemented a rag uh, use case which is retrieval augmented generation with lama index how to evaluate its performance how would i know that it's performing well what would i benchmark it with got it okay so um if you want to develop your own uh, uh, okay to evaluate there are uh, uh, eval- there is an evaluation module in lama index and there are different evalu- uh, evaluators as well like correctness evaluator faithfulness evaluator which means your response hallucinated or not or relevancy evaluator and context sim- uh, how uh, context similarity uh, things and uh, i think guideline evaluator like uh, whether your response ha- has statistics if my response is not doesn't mention the statistics perfectly now uh, my answer is not so good my response is not so weak so guideline evaluator takes care of all these things so essentially uh, some of these doesn't require ground truth labels but some require ground truth labels as well so if uh, 
we'll use gpt4 as a uh, bigger model wherein it evaluates the rag, uh, whether your responses are according to the context it used uh, or not and it is according to the query or not so these evaluators take care of uh, those things and uh, if you if you want to experiment with uh, uh, these things there are llama data sets in llama index wherein uh, you can there are couple of data sets um, you can download them and we have a rag evaluator pack you build a uh, so there are three steps involved to download the data set you uh, build your uh, rag pipeline and then uh, use the rag evaluator pack Uh, and uh, start evaluating your rag pipeline and it shows all these metrics uh, automatically and then see how it goes awesome awesome once uh, one organization is connected to llama index as in they are using llama index how can they ensure the privacy and security of the data sources connected to it so uh, i mean uh, data security and privacy uh, we don't uh, have anything uh, i mean any data stored with llama index right so uh, it's any other library and since we are not uh, storing any data it's it will be on your side wherever uh, the only thing you need to take care of is uh, data being sent sent to any other llm either you are using gpt open ai based models or gemini or maybe using uh, through azure uh, there uh, that's where your uh, data is being sent to any other llm and it will be that's where uh, the privacy concern comes in got it so it's just like a library which is installed in uh, organization on um uh, on uh, computer uh, cloud server. service service okay. yes yes and but but let's say if that organization is also using this faithful evaluators that you just talked about and you said that for that you use bigger model like gpt4 and all for that to data that the context will be passed to gpt4 right to the llm yes 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 so yeah. is there any security issue there because since the context is passed to gpt4 yeah uh that's what uh, i meant so uh, the concern uh, if you are using uh, azure or uh, gemini models i mean they might have taken care of some compliance issue, compliance issues on the security side so you need to check their compliances and then see uh, 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 your data is secure or not yeah got it got it and, and what are some of the future directions of llama index oh yeah uh, so we are coming up with the enterprise platform so currently it's in the beta stage so we will be uh, he'll soon be come i think in the coming months uh, you'll be seeing the enterprise platform that you can use and play around what are some extra features that uh, users will get with the enterprise edition <laughs> okay i think uh, that is something i shouldn't speak at this point of time <laughs> maybe in some other yeah definitely uh, yeah so that's it from my side ravi like uh, any final message you have for data track viewers oh i i think like share subscribe to data track <laughs> and as well as use llama index <laughs> but yeah honestly speaking like i uh, i think uh, uh, even uh, i i watched couple of videos of data track uh, and yeah uh, kudos to you on maintaining it i think it's been more than a year uh, one and a half year i guess if i remember it correctly uh, kudos on that part yes thanks thanks ravi so ravi thanks for your time and thanks for being here uh we'll have more Thank suggestions you. once your, your enterprise edition is out there and llama index make much more progress yeah. to make many more sure. those contributions we will have another round of discussion yeah yeah absolutely sure sure mm, there's a lot to sure. learn from you and definitely the audience would have enjoyed a lot yeah thank you thanks a lot thanks for having me thanks ravi bye thank you bye